the tyre market can be an absolute minefield to try and navigate your way through when it comes to choosing the right tyre for you, especially when it comes to things like width, compound and casing. There's just so many to choose from. So fear not, in this video today, I'm gonna help you navigate that rubbery minefield to choose just hopefully what might be the best type of tyre for you by taking a look at two of the main contenders out there that we're all bound to use at some point. Let's take a look at our tyre contenders then. In the red corner, we have this. Yes, it's an XC style trail type tyre. So something you'll find a lot on trail bikes, cross country bikes, 29 by 2.35, so about a good width that you'll find on most trail XC type bikes these days. Solid casing, quite a low profile tread pattern, quite tight knit together. That's gonna make it very fast rolling, but it is gonna sacrifice things like grip. The casings are generally a little bit thinner on these, meaning puncture protection might not quite be up there to what you're used to. And flexibility, obviously, with that thinner sidewall as well, I mean, you might feel the tire squirm. But a tire like that's gonna normally weigh around 700 grams or so. So if you're trying to build up a nice lightweight whippet of a bike, that would be the one to go through, especially for in the summer. However, in the blue corner, we have this, the Vittoria Mazza. Enduro casing, 29 by 2.6. This thing, well, it's aggressive. Look at that. You've got big side knobs along the edge there for maximum grip in the corners, bite into the ground. Really thick casing for maximum puncture protection, so it's really hard to tear those sidewalls or even pinch puncture. This thing is built to go fast. Like I said, 2.6 is not gonna be the quickest roll in, but for all the grip, all the ability to just smash those aggressive trails, this is the other end of the spectrum you might be looking at. How are we gonna differentiate between what kind of tire might be best or best suited to our type of riding, I hear you ask? Well, through a very long series of high-tech and extremely scientific experiments to some degree or another. Now, the setup that I'm gonna be using is the same bike, so my Orbea Rallon, and I'm gonna have the wheels and tires off it, which are Enduro Casing Mazza 2.6s, front and rear, and then I've taken the wheels and tires off of my XC bike. So on the front is a Vittoria Barzo 2.35, on the back is a Mezcal 2.35. Now you might be wondering, why are you running different wheels? Well, the reason is that each wheel set is indicative of that type of riding. There's, you're not gonna buy an XC type tire like this and put it on a big wide rimmed downhill wheel. It's not gonna work that way. So the reason I've done it is for that. However, I am gonna keep the setups the same. So we're gonna use no inserts on any of them, same tire pressures, uh, similar amounts of sealant, because I put a similar amount of sealant in all of them, regardless of the width. And like I said, on the same bike, on the same courses all the time, to try and keep things as even as possible. Obviously, you're gonna have to take these experiments with a pinch of salt, but it's just to try and show you guys what each tire is capable of. Experiment number one then, rolling resistance. So effectively, the drag a tire creates. Less drag, less rolling resistance, the easier it is to carry and get up to speed. So to do this, I've got my starting point right here. I've got my finishing point about 50 meters down there. And essentially, by just letting go of the brakes and rolling down, I'm gonna time how long it takes to get from here to there. The quicker the time, the less rolling resistance. We'll do three goes on each tire setup. Quickest time wins. We'll take an average across the three and compare and contrast. So here we go. One, two, three. And we're off. Okay, so rolling resistance experiment done on the Enduro tires. The average was 8.5 seconds over roughly 50 meters there. Now let's go put the cross country wheels and tires on and have a look there. The XC tires are on the bike then, and it looks a little bit funky. They're slightly narrower, uh, narrow rims, obviously the big rotors, but it's time to do rolling resistance run number one. Let's go. We're off. Let's see. Oh, it's fast. It's really fast. Ooh, the oh, braking's gonna be interesting. Whoa. I'm not gonna tell you the number yet. You're gonna have to wait. 
The tines are in then for the rolling resistance experiment, if you like. So with the Enduro tires, like I said, the 2.6s, the average time it took to get from one point to this point, unassisted, just rolling and going, was 8.5 seconds. The XC combo, well, I think we kind of thought it would happen, but it was a little bit quicker. It was a 7.9 second average, so 0.6 faster. I think a lot of that is down to the tire combo. So obviously the XC tires are slightly narrower. They're a much lower profile and a firmer compound as well, but also the, the combination of tires. So the slightly slicker rear tire is gonna roll a lot faster, especially sitting down with my weight on the rear. So like I said, from this test, we can deduce. If you are looking for that faster rolling, mile munching type of tire, well then, the sort of XE trail side of things might be one for you, but it's over to the braking. Right, it's experiment number two time now. So what we're gonna do is a deceleration test, a braking test, if you like, which one is gonna slow me down the quickest and easiest. Now for this, we're gonna use our same starting point as our first experiment, it hasn't moved at all. Neither has our 50 meter or so stick, that's in exactly the same place, but this time, instead of timing the distance it takes for me to get to that stick, what I'm gonna do is just let go, roll in from there, and just brake as hard as I can when I get to that point, and then we'll put a marker point down and measure the distances it takes me to slow down. Shortest distance is the winner. Well, the winner in the sense of it makes you slow down the quickest and safest. We'll see. Run number one. Ooh, it's a steady start. Okie doke, that wasn't very far. So let's put a marker on the front wheel. Here we go, here's our stone. I don't have a stone, where is it? Oh. There's my marker stone. And... You flinched! Cameraman flinched. And look where I stopped, basically, Little bit heavy on the front brake there, exactly I would say, because you can see the skid marks with our second attempt. So I don't think we really need to put a marker there. Like I said, highly scientific, so let's measure it in feet. 13, so the shortest braking distance, which was on two attempts there, is 13 Shimano's. 14, 50, ah, and then 15 Shimano. So we'll take an average of 14 Shimano's. Let's see what the XC tires have got. Braking experiment time on the XC tires. They've been switched over, and I'm predicting that the results are going to take a little longer to brake because you haven't quite got as much tread, as much footprint biting into the ground when you really go heavy on that front brake. But there's only one way to find out. So I'll see you in three, two, one. Okay, we're going. Remember, this picks up speed quicker as well, so that's the trouble. Oh, gosh. Okay, so you've got to bear in mind here, obviously, these tyres pick up speed faster, so you're actually going quicker into your braking zone. Now, that should make the braking zone slightly longer because you're carrying more speed. However, in this case, be it because I'm used to the brakes, but I've used this bike a lot, so who knows? It's actually on par, look, with our first attempt on the Enduro tyres which I remember on our Shimano shoe scale was 15 Shimano. So, is that maximal braking? Can I brake harder? If I brake harder, I think I'm gonna lose traction. I feel like that was probably about as hard as I could brake without the front wheel full on locking up. So, let's get back on up there for run number two. Oh, oh. oh yes. I mean, I would say that's consistent all three within a few inches of each other. So we're gonna call it 15 on the old Shimano shoe scale. What's interesting to note here is that the slick tire didn't really make too much of a difference because the braking was so front heavy, the back end was kind of locked, but just skipping over the top. All the braking was done through the front. And actually, as we can see, your braking point, although obviously we're not over a massive distance, you come in faster ever so slightly. The braking zone was only a foot and a half longer. So actually on the braking front, 
not too bad. However, it's fairly mellow and it's not really high speed. So I think if we were to extrapolate this over a much bigger distance or steeper, looser ground, I do think the Enduro tire would definitely shine out a little bit more. But on that note, we gotta go do some XC laps now. The last in our trio of experiments then is something a little more real world and it's actually going out for a ride with both types of tyres. Now I've set up an XC loop that's going to take about 30 minutes to do. And I'm going to put a few metrics to it this time. So we're going to look at things like heart rate, power and we'll obviously time it and see if to do the same loop on both types of tyre is more effort required, does it need more power, does it take longer on which one, maybe as well, we can split that down to just the downhill portion of the segment as well and some CC, which one I think we might know, but we'll come into its own there. So, cameraman's made a little start box for me. I need to change into my disco slippers and then we're away. Philippe <laughs> Net, cameraman, Leo, that's a bit of a, a sorry looking start box, isn't it? Well, we'll work on that for next time. But for now, all the sensors are connected. Let's do this loop, right, three, two, one. Yeah. Right, here we go. I feel this is like where the enduro tyre should come into its own. Onto a big fire road drag now. Okay, back to the sort of starting box. And across the line. Wow, that's a pretty tough loop. Good mixture of fire roads, the downhill's pretty tech and stuff. Enduro tyres felt good, but as for the numbers, you have to wait and see, because it's time for the XC tyre. Okay, back into the wonderfully designed start box we go, ready for our XC lap on our sort of XC orientated tyres. Now, just because they're XC orientated and it's an XC lap, there is still a variety of terrain. So in three, two, one, let's see how they go. And you can tell instantly the speed on the fire road. Well, it's quicker. Oh, oh. oh yes. They're just a bit skittery over the bumps. The roots. Oh, nearly got me there. So it feels easier to pedal up the fire road. It feels like there's less effort required to go the same speed. I can see the finish line. Where's that box? That little twiggy box. Boom. Done. Oh, all right, let's let that sink up and look at the numbers. The results are in for the XC loop then, and there's some interesting comparisons on the two tires. Now, like we said, we had the same bike, same rotors were swapped, same pressures were kept. We just swapped the tires and their respective wheels. And how it goes is basically it took the enduro tired version to do the loop in a 23 minute oosh, dead. Nothing more, nothing less, whereas the XC tires did it in a 22-12, 48 seconds faster. But interestingly, I didn't try any harder as it were. So I put power meter pedals on to measure the effort, because numbers don't lie, and there was about an 18 watt difference between enduro tires and XC tires from when I did it, and a two beats per minute difference in average heart rate as well. So the difference was really negligible on whether I tried harder on one. I tried to actually keep the the effort relative on them both, so they were exactly the same. However, there were some notable differences. Yes, on the fire road, 
there was probably a lot more faster hard pack rolling than gnarly knobbly downhill stuff on this loop. Lending itself, you could say, more to the faster rolling, slightly narrower, harder compound tires. However, it was noticeable the difference when you dropped in and it got really tight and twisting, you had to push it in the turns, the bigger tire with softer compound and the more aggressive tread was really much more confidence inspiring and able to bite into the turns and, and able to hook up and carry speed. So I think we can conclude from this that obviously the type of tire really does depend on the type of riding you are doing. However, sometimes mixing up those tires can actually be a great way. So I would actually consider from this having the still aggressive tire on the front so the front end doesn't push out, but I might actually go to something slightly faster rolling on the back. And certainly when it comes to weight as well, the weight of an enduro tire can be a thousand grams plus or a kilo plus, which is a lot of weight, especially if you're running an XC bike or a trail bike. So it just goes to show that there are horses for courses and that actually tires do indeed matter. But hey, I hope you've enjoyed this video with a, enjoyed the old experiments with a little pinch of salt. It's been good fun. If you want to see any more, why not let me know in the comments down below. But from me, for now, I am out of here. Thank you very much for watching everyone and I'll see you later.